وقد عجز الطبيب فدعا الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيق وامتنان وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد أحب في الله We live in times where believers are being terrorized by every one jinns and human beings believers have been terrorized by human beings shaitan and jinn shaitan they terrorize the believers everywhere they are the only way forward is to go back to allah and hold tight to the rope of allah and stick to the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam today i'm going to narrate to you a story a story from a brother called suleiman suleiman narrates it begins by him saying i was a poor boy and i struggled in my life and then until i opened a small place as a grocery i opened that grocery i was running that grocery for sometimes i made a little bit of money alhamdulillah and i got married few years passed by allah grant me three children life started to become difficult with the grocery running the kids running the wife house for rent everything be- started to become absolutely tough and i start thinking what do i need to do what where do i need to go where do i need to get a job and he remembered that he's got a cousin who is a teacher in the school and he thought maybe if i go and ask him a job i may get a job in the school he travels to that place when he reaches he met his cousin when he met his cousin he was so happy and they were both happy and he started to explain this is the ordeal i'm going through this is life and everything i'm looking for a job he said fair enough here we're looking for somebody i'm a teacher here and he's a big teacher he's a big school and we're looking for somebody to run the canteen of the school the canteen of the school is closed I'll speak to the head teacher and the manager of the school and I'll get I'll get back to you tomorrow inshallah He goes and Suleiman was anxious waiting for the news and the second day his cousin delivers the news that the manager agreed for you to work in the school now what needs to happen is I need to introduce you and show you everything and the next day he takes him back to school when he takes him to school and he show him where he needs to open the grocery the canteen small canteen where he needs to open and sell his stuff and where he needs to live where he needs to sleep so it's going to be the security at the same time and at the, at the same time he's going to run his own business in the school he showed him everything suleiman was overwhelmed joy alhamdulillah and he went to the town got everything is needed for the rest of, for the canteen fill the canteen everything straight away he started running the business suleiman was informed by his cousin the timings is in the morning you sell whatever you sell and in the afternoon the children will break 2 o'clock go home but 4 o'clock children will come back but only the boys will come back and be playing in the field and the school was absolutely a massive school so the first day when he put everything he was so happy he sold and full of profit loads of stuff he sold and there was some stuff juices and cakes and everything remaining in the canteen zuhur came by and he went and prayed dhuhr and came back and sat and ate his dinner suleiman and all the children left the school 
He was on his own in the school, wondering and thinking, and didn't take that long. Four o'clock approached, and children of the school started coming slowly, slowly to play football in the field. And along with the children comes a man, and he sits next to Suleiman. And Suleiman was wondering, what is going on? The man came and sit and sat next to Suleiman, and he started explaining, and, and he started asking Suleiman, what, how are you, Suleiman? Where do you live? Suleiman told him I came from far uh, town. I came here to look for a job. I got a job, and I'm living here. And he asked him, where are you going to sleep? He says, here. And he asked him again, where is you going to sleep? And he told him, here. And he asked him the third time, where are you going to sleep? Suleiman told him, here. This is my place now. I'm going to be sleeping here, and I'm going to be selling my stuff there. And he told let me tell you something. In this place, there's jinns who taunt people and who torture people. So I'm warning you. And Suleiman started thinking himself, is this guy jealousy? Is this guy, guy in having a laugh? Who is he trying to do? Is he trying to make me scared so he can take over the place? In his, himself, he's just speaking to himself. And he said, oh, don't worry, jinn is, they're not going to do anything. He replied back to the moon, uh, the man, and he says, Allah is with me. Nothing will happen. The man told him the last person who was here, he only stayed for two days. And none of this, anybody who takes over this grocery, this anybody who takes over this canteen, doesn't last. He only stays two days. The third day, if he flees from here. The last man who was working here, who came and took over the canteen, went mental. The jinn destroyed him in the night. He says, you see that far flank of that building is there. There is where the devil lives. The jinn, that's where they live. So be careful, I'm telling you. So while he's talking, Suleiman was terrified. What was what's wrong with this man? But Suleiman says, nothing to worry. Alhamdulillah, I rely upon Allah. Nothing will happen to me. So slowly, slowly, Maghrib started to creeping in and approaching. And the children slowly, slowly start leaving, leaving one by one. And the man followed the children as well. Maghrib came in. He had the adhan from a very far. He made wudu, Suleiman, and prayed adhan. And went inside and took one of the books and sat right in the field where the lamps, the posts, slumps, and the lights, everything. He sat there and reading his book and thinking, Alhamdulillah, by Allah, I'm going to bring my wife, I'm going to bring my children, I'm going to stay there together. And... Our life will move on. He started thinking and planning. And Isha, boom, came in. And he prayed Isha. When he finished Isha, he had his drink and piece of cake. And he was sitting there. It didn't take that long. He started feeling someone is breathing next to him. And he, start, he looks... What is there? And say, I will learn the shaitan again. And he's carrying on reading the book. And he start hearing noise. Someone throwing stones on the door of which the room is going to sleep. And he goes and checks. Nobody is there. And he goes back again and sits. And he started thinking, what is going on? Now fear started to creep in in Suleiman. And he goes and takes his book and goes back to the same spot again and sits and starts reading his books. While he's reading his book, in the corner of his eyes, he sees two people passing by. When he lifts his head off, they disappeared. And he goes back again and he reads, and in the same spot again, 
the two people passing by. He looks, nothing is there. And he's just holding the book while he's having fear slowly, slowly creeping in. And then again, the third time, he sees from the front of his eyes, he sees two people passing by. When he lifts up, they're not there. And he start holding the book and he start suddenly someone is breathing next to him. Breathing and breathing. And when he look, he saw a very ugly face and he screamed wow! and run away to his room and closed. And his room shivering and wondering what is going on. And suddenly he start hearing noise of a child crying. He find very loud and he stops. The child cries and he stops. The child cries and he stops. He went on for about five times. And then he start hearing people walking around outside the door. The room is barricading himself. And he starts saying, what is going on? And he starts seeking refuge. He starts reading Surah Al-Fatiha. And he says, I'm not well educated in the Quran and everything. So he starts seeking refuge. A'udhu Billah Minish Shaitan Rajim. Reading Surah Al-Fatiha. And he starts hearing knocks on the door. He does not open. And then the knocks on the door stops. The knocks goes in the window. And he stops. And he start hearing movement of the chairs in one of the class. The chairs being moved and pushed and he opens the door and goes and checks. When he opens the door and goes and checks and, say, and then starts saying, the rajim, loud, the noise disappeared. And he goes out again and goes back to the same spot and sat in the same spot. Now, he start, He took the book, but he chose a nice book this time. He says, I'm going to read the story of Khalid ibn Walid. So he took the story, uh, the book of story of Khalid ibn Walid. While he's reading the story of Khalid ibn Walid, after five minutes, it didn't take long, he start hearing footsteps coming, very fast, coming, 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 coming. He's seeking refuge, but the footsteps are coming, are coming. They just finish right in front of his feet, the footsteps disappeared, and he start looking around. You see, nothing is there. And I start thinking, what is going on today? How am I going to escape this? He start thinking, oh my Lord, what is happening? And he slowly walks and goes back to his room, closes his room. When he closed the room, and he goes in his bed and he starts feeling someone is inside the doorway with him. He jumps and screams and he jumps and screams and comes out from the bed and sits in the seat and shivering and looking too much fear. And he starts seeing his fridge, which is full of drinks, opening, closing from the window. Opening, closing, opening, closing. And suddenly one after another drink falling from the fridge. The stuff he bought. And he start crying and make and shouting. Do not punish me. Do not punish me. I've not done anything to you. And he start crying and calling upon Allah. Crying. And he stops. And then he relaxes for a bit. And suddenly all the fridge went boom, down. All his drinks, all everything, and his tears coming out from Suleiman. And he said, Ya Allah, just give me this night and I'm out from here. I will never stay again here. Suleiman lived upon terror on that night. All his stuff, grocery stuff, drinks, cakes, 
chocolates, whatever was smashed out. He was looking at him. After the fridge fall down, everything was being thrown one by another while he's looking, but he doesn't see who's throwing it. The terror he lived upon that night, it was absolutely overwhelming. Suleiman start think start after when that finish that ordeal finish of the fridge falling down the biscuits whatever of his grocery all out everything went quiet so Suleiman was sitting down shivering and reading Fatiha seeking out the and he start hearing people not one not two, not three, so many people talking while walking around, talking while walking around, surrounding, walking around that room he is, walking around to the window, to the door, to the other window, to the window, to the door. And he doesn't see nobody, but he hears the footsteps. Tuck, tuck, not one person, so many of them. And he keeps on repeating the same word, do not punish me because I did not do anything to you. Do not punish me because I did not do anything to me, to you. And after some time, that noise disappears. And he starts hearing, hearing a, somebody comes inside his room and he feels someone inside his room and he's wondering how did he come in how how did he how did he come in this person and he started looking everywhere and he started seeking refuge and the fajr adhan hits and all the old deal and everything speed Suleiman stayed in his room he did not come out of his room until when the sunlight came out and he went out and he sat outside waiting for his cousin and the minute he saw his cousin he went to him mad he said why you didn't tell him his cousin told him what he said there's gyms here he said, because, yeah, I've heard there's jinns, but I didn't take it serious that there's jinns here. And Suleiman told him, you should have told me, come and show you what happened to me. He went and took him to his place, to his room, to his canteen. Everything of his was smashed out. The cousin of Suleiman got shocked and he said, listen, I was told so many times, but I did not take it seriously. Because I thought, these people are just jokers. But this is true now. It's happened. It happened to you. I do believe it. Suleiman told his cousin, I'm not staying here. So he go and get a, tax, a, a car, load his stuff, and disappeared. And gone back to where he came from. And he said, a night of a terror and a night and every night of peace. I choose every night to live in peace. And at the moment, Alhamdulillah, I am living in peace. My business is going well. Everything of mine is going well. And I will never forget the night of terror, the night of the jinns. Ahibba fillah, Suleiman was a Muslim who prays five times. But his religion was not tight. Meaning, Adhkar's morning, evening, never read. He doesn't know how to read the Quran properly. Atul Kursi doesn't know how to read. Many of the brothers and sisters today are like that. And they end up encountering jinns. Because jinns leaves either in the hotel, either in the house, new house you go and moved in. Either you may travel and you may encounter this situation like this of Suleiman. Hold tight to your religion. 
hold tight to your salah and adhkars and hold tight to your Quran. Stay tuned for more stories. Abu Yahya from the Rukh Talk. Wa akhru da'wana wa salamun ala al-mursalin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hatta yatabayyan lahum annahu al-haq.